Kevin Gustafson from Project Blue Thumbs joining us to demonstrate how to install a rain garden. And we've already cleared the area of turf. We used a sod cutter and some of the other areas we had to spray out with a herbicide. Uh, but before we start, we needed to conduct a percolation test. Tell us about this. Yes, well, um, it's helpful to know how quickly your soil will drain. So to do this, you can dig a hole about a foot deep, which is about the maximum that you would want a rain garden. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, saturate the soil ahead of time. We've had a lot of rain lately, so the soil is pretty well saturated, but you can uh, water your lawn or whatever for a while if it's been dry. Um, then fill the hole a couple times and see how fast it drains. So um, the homeowner here did that. Uh, it drained in uh, 11 hours the first time you filled the hole, 12 hours the second time. So it looks like pretty well you could get the maximum depth of a rain garden in this uh, soil. And if it's slower draining, we're going to want to go a little bit shallower with our rain garden. Exactly. So if it had taken 12 hours, uh, well, if it had taken 24 hours to drain, then you could make your maximum depth a half of a foot, so six inches. Okay. And that's a good thing to do when we get started to help us determine how large of an area and how deep we're going to want to build the rain garden. Yes. All right, well, let's uh, get moving and start building. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, before we start uh, digging out our rain garden and building our berms, we need to determine the location of those berms and also where the height of our overflow is. And we're going to use the information from our perk test. Um, but we also need to look at the lay of the land a bit. So walk us through uh, how to go about uh, determining that height of the overflow. Okay, well, first of all, we had this uh, hole that showed that it drained easily um, 12 inches within a, within a one day period. So we know we can have a maximum height of our outlet of 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also determined that, you know, if there, there's a tree that we want the pulling depth to be about two inches below that tree. So we tied the string to the base of the tree and we can use this string and a level um, you know, use a level here and make sure you get this level and then you can measure the height here and we found out that you know this place where we wanted the berm was eight inches uh, for the top of the outlet that's perfectly adequate and um, we actually found that in this area we could have taken the berm all the way to the end and still had just a 10 inch outlet correct so uh, but the homeowner decided he liked the two-tier system so we'll put a berm here and a berm there it's easily adequate Okay. Now, if this soil had drained much more slowly, like a clay soil, only two inches in a day or something like that, then this two-tier system would have been necessary. So there's a lot of options, um, both aesthetically and functionally, mm -hmm. to think about when we're going through this process. Mm -hmm. Well, we're ready. We have some mar uh, place markers uh, here so that we can know the height of our berm, and we're just going to start digging out and moving our soil up uh, from the rain garden to the berm. All right, let's All right. get working. Well, we finished uh, excavating and building our berm and basically just moved soil from what I'll call our pool and put it up in the berm. And this is our critical piece, right? Tell mm -hmm. us about the height and, and what we need to watch out for here. Okay, so the thing to notice here is this is our outlet. So the berm is built higher than the outlet on either side. And this is where we're controlling where the water flows out. So when the water fills up, um, and this is the pool level that we decided before. As you can see, uh, we had the string strung from the tree to the, to the uh, second berm and the string goes right over the top of the tip of the outlet of the upper uh, berm and it's much above the lower berm so we'll have an eight inch pool up above the first berm a five inch pool above the second berm the second pool is lower than the upper pool and the outlet of that second pool is lower than the inlet here and likewise this overflow is lower than the upper edge of our pool so we won't have any water backing up in the landscape and then to hold this soil back, we're going to put in a, a liner. Mm -hmm. We could use uh, any kind of um, erosion control fabric or a plastic liner. Mm -hmm. And basically, we just want to keep the water from running, 
moving that soil out and, and eating into this. The important thing about putting the liner down is you want it to go up on the side of the berms on both sides so that you've completely covered the whole channel structure to prevent erosion of the outlet. Okay, and then we're just gonna go ahead and cover this with stone, mm -hmm. hold it in place and try to do it in a nice decorative manner. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's get started. the upper berm and we're working on the lower berm we've run out of rock we'll have to keep working on this later um, but our goal of course is to cover that plastic and make it look good right but mm -hmm. functionally there's some other things right so um, well one thing aesthetically we've kind of tried to put the bigger rocks on the outside and smaller rocks towards the middle of the berm and then actually wherever you see the plastic through, mm -hmm. you can put even smaller rocks and, and fill in the holes. Keep filling it. And the water's going to flow through the rocks, so we're not worried about the rocks holding back right. the water. Right. But sometimes you think you have your design proper, and then you find that you're holding too much water. What do we do then? Right. So if you find that that ends up pulling for two or more days, despite all your best efforts to test the soil ahead of time, um, the nice thing about this outlet structure is all you have to do is pull off the rocks, pull off the fabric, and lower your berm down you know, by number, the number of inches that you need, you'll have a smaller pooling area and, and then it'll drain fast enough for you. Okay, well we've decided to hold off on planting this because we're getting into the heat of the summer, but actually that's gonna give us a great opportunity to continue to control the Bermuda grass in here. We're, the homeowner is actually gonna use solarization, so I'm excited about that because it'll also protect our soil and prevent some erosion. Well, we'll be back in the fall with plants and to finish the aesthetic appeal of our rain garden. Excellent.